Good afternoon. Hello. Good. How you doing? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. All right, all right, good evening. Good evening, everyone, or afternoon, I must say. Thank you for uh, joining with us this afternoon. Uh, we are going to continue uh, studying the book of uh, Revelation. Uh, right now we are, I believe, on chapter 13. Um, so we welcome you uh, to those uh, who are connected with, with us on today, as well as those that may listen to this at a later time. Uh, we're just going to follow what we customarily do, and that is open up with prayer, read our scripture, and then have a discussion on uh, the chapter. All right, so if you would join with me in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful again for your mercy, your grace, your love you've shown to us. Uh, Lord, we are grateful also that we are able to come together uh, through the aid of technology and learn more about our responsibilities to you, to ourself, and to the world. Lord, we pray as we navigate through this particular text that you open our eyes and ears so that we may both see and hear uh, what you have for us in such a time as this. Bless, Lord, those who are connected with us. Bless, Lord, those who are on their way to be connected and those that listen to this at a later time. In your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we ask all things. Let everyone say amen and amen. Amen. I'm going to open up a reading of the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation uh, from the New International Version. And it reads as follows. Revelation chapter 13, beginning at verse number one. And the dragon stood on the shore of the sea. And I, which is John, saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had 10 horns and seven heads with 10 crowns on his horns and on each head a blasphemous name. Verse two, the beast I saw resembled a leopard but had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was astonished and followed the beast. Men worshiped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. And they also worshiped the beast and asked, who is like the beast? Who can make war against him? The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise his authority for 42 months. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. He was given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. And 
He was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the book of life, belonging to the lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. Revelation chapter 13, verse nine. He who has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity, he will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword, he will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of the saints. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf, he made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. He performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men. Because of the signs he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth. He ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. He was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. He also forced everyone great, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is man's number. His number is 666. Six, six. The word of God, for the people of God, to the glory of God. I don't know about you, but uh, while you studied uh, this text, you can't tell me you didn't end saying, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, there, there's so much imagery. Uh, there's so much symbolism. Uh, there's a lot of uh, um, uh, allegory as well as uh, pointing uh, to uh, Tech, uh, text in the Bible in terms of Daniel and all other type of uh, uh, biblical uh, writ uh, that we can certainly make connection and, and, as well as some things that we have seen uh, today in our culture and times. Uh, so I'm going to open up the floor. Hopefully this will be a lively discussion and you know my question. Uh, what, what impact you? What hit you hard? What did you have tension with? What are some things that caused you to have an aha moment? And how do you read this text in light of other scriptures that you are familiar with? So the floor is open. Anyone, you can start off. Yes, uh, first thing I want to get clear. Okay, in the first uh, uh, first sentence there where it said, and I. Mm -hmm. Now, I, you look funny to me, but uh, I, is that referring to John the Baptist or who? Yeah, yeah I, I would think that would be John. I okay. Yeah. That's what I wanted to get that clear because as we go through, I read another place where it says a revelation is confusion, which I agree with that also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that's, that's, that's it for right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. It op the chapter 13 opens up and it says, and the dragon stood on the shore of the sea and I saw a beast. Mm -hmm. coming out of the sea. It sounds like uh, uh, John is, is introducing something or some uh, <coughs> a new type of being, a new type of creature, very distinctive, 
in how John describes uh, this beast. Uh, 10 horns, seven heads, 10 crowns on his horns, and on each head, a blasphemous name. Mm -hmm. Now, there are theologians that say that this is illusions. Th these are allusions uh, to not only uh, leaders uh, in Rome, but Rome itself. And so, uh, but blasphemous names, what, what, what does that mean? What is that saying? On each head is a blasphemous name. Are we talking about idols that they are worshiping, uh, pastor, instead of uh, God, they're worshiping idols? Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah. One of the things that uh, I saw in, in reading this were a couple of things, but one of the things was that it's just like uh, the beasts, they have different appearances, but it's just like uh, RT, you and I, we have different appearances, but our objective or, or our mission is the same. And I think that with, with uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, the beast speaks through I'm sorry, the dragon speaks through all of the beasts. And even though they have different appearances, their objective is the same. Yeah. And the objective is to be, is to go against Christ, is to be anti-Christ. And again, this is what I think is happening when we look at the different, uh, different kinds of things. And they talk about the beast that has, you know, and one beast has this description, another beast has another description. But all of them, the dragon speaks through them, and the dragon is saying the same thing through them, even though they have different descriptions. And, and I think that when I read that, I thought that's what I understood. And am I correct in, in, in assuming that? Yeah, I, th I, th I think you're spot on. Cassandra, your hand is up. Yeah, I like what uh, Deacon Phoenix is saying there, because I was thinking the same thing. So... Like with the first beast, um, it, it mentions about these 10 horns and seven heads. And I think you said it could be like potential leaders of um, of these areas. And um, I was thinking like maybe political leaders. Then the second beast, um, it said, I think in verse 11, is like a lamb. Yeah. And so I took that as being the second beast is probably most likely the one who they refer to as the Antichrist, because he's the one we know who comes um, after, you know, everything has got started. He comes uh, and he's acting like he's coming to save or to help. So I think that's why it's describing him like a lamb, because that's how he's coming to appear like he's the okay. actual savior. But, you know, after his 42 months, then he revealed who he really is. And let, let, let's flush that out because you you bring up you, you and uh, Deacon uh, Phoenix bring up a powerful uh, 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 word and or phrase that I want to make sure that we have a firm grasp of. And that is this phrase, this this word uh, called the Antichrist. One thing we have to keep in mind that there is a duality of, of the facets of an antichrist. One, an antichrist is, as it is poured into the word, is against Christ, okay? This individual is against anything holy, against anything sacred, against anything that points to God. But we also have to keep in mind and, and Deacon Phoenix alluded to this, and so did you, Sandy, that the, the Antichrist is also a being that mimics and mocks Christ, a being that gets so close to almost it looking like Christ, acting like Christ, but missing central elements that are that are uh, 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 that are pillars to our Christian faith. Uh, for for example, when you when you said this one looked like a lamb, but it wasn't really a lamb. The the other one, this beast here, um, had a fatal wound, but it it, it was it looked like it was regenerated. Fatal wound 
means the wound caused you to die because it was fatal. But what the illusion here is, is that the beast somehow either regenerated or survived or was resurrected from this fatal wound. So, so then I got to ask the question, what is, what is the purpose of that aspect of the Antichrist? I think that aspect of the Antichrist is to force the church to be able to utilize the essentials of Christian doctrine and be able to separate wheat from tear, to be able to use what the Bible, the Holy Spirit, and what God has taught us to be wary of those that are like sheep with wool's clothing on. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I think we've got to be cautious of the devices and functionality of the Antichrist. And we see that today. I mean, with 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 uh, uh, Trump getting up when he was in office, I mean, this guy was getting up talking about how he never lies, how he uh, never apologizes how he is more popular, if not equal in popularity to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These are words that he said. And what happened is even those in the church said, hmm, there's something to him. Wow, he's really making a lot of sense. But those that adhere to the essentials of Christian doctrine recognizes the devices of the of, of antichrist-like device the, the the things that occur now i'm not calling donald trump the antichrist i'm not saying that i'm just using some of the elements of his verbiage to bring it to the surface how we have to be a wise in how we and, and we've seen it historically the the the, the, the davidian uh, uh cult that was out here all of these people that mm -hmm. claim to be the messiah John, what, what is what is the one that had the red Kool Aid? I, I can't think of his name. Yeah, went down to Diana. That guy, yes. Jim Jones. Jim Jones. All of these people that claim to be Christ. I mean, they they fooled even those you would think had some type of common sense. But that's that's the functionality of the Antichrist. Any, any other observations? But I just like to say all of these different pieces and things that we are talking about, they have one something in common, and that is they all are evil. Mm. Pastor, uh, in, in reading uh, chapter 13, and I don't want to, you know, dominate uh, the discussion, uh, it says that the dragon speaks through his emissaries, speaks through his ambassadors. Now, he knows the scriptures. You know, and we know that because, you know, he tried to use them against Jesus in the wilderness right. in order to. And then if he knows the scriptures and, and his emissaries or his ambassadors, he's speaking through them. He's telling them what the scriptures are also what he's going to say to uh, those with whom they come in contact with. Now, if we are to be able to uh, ward off what they're coming with, we must know the scriptures also. Please. And if we don't learn the scriptures and know the scriptures as Jesus did, we might succumb to what they say. When somebody, someone might say an eye for an eye, oh, okay, you know, he hit me, I'm going to hit him back. Or, you know, he, or he, you know, whatever, you know, the scriptures say, they take it literally instead of hyperbur hyperbur bur you know, hyperbolically. So again, you know, if he's if he's going to speak through the scriptures, then you know we must be able to defend them, uh, defend uh, against when they come as with the scriptures. There it is. There it is. Wow, powerful. Deacon uh, Archie Williams. Uh, no, I didn't I had no comment on that. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Any other observations? Uh, uh, great, great, uh, great, great analysis on that. Yes, yeah, Sandy. I'm sorry, your hand is up. Yeah. Um, I to the um animals that there i think it was in um i said i saw 
example, a leopard, a bear, and a lion. Well, that's a reference to um, Daniel. Yep. Daniel's vision about, um, I think it was the, the conquering nations. And I think that they are supposed to, I think the leopard represent uh, Babylon. The bear was, was it Medo, Persia, and yep. the lion? Greece. Yep. And so he yeah, he did um prophesize this too. I think it was Nebuchadnezzar, I think it yep. was. Yep. And so we see it here being referenced again because these nations, I'm just looking at it as far as like locations when it's talking about where these beasts come out of the sea and the beasts come out of the land. I'm I'm thinking it's more like a description of the location of where they are. And I think yep. like the sea without I, I thought maybe it was like the Mediterranean Sea, just looking at a map of where they are. So it's kind of like John is giving us uh, an ideal of where all of this is actually, you know, taking place. I mean, it, I could just be thinking a little too far into it, but that's just mm -hmm. what I'm visualizing when I see it. No, I, I what what what's interesting to me is, yes, this is a vision, um, a, a revelatory vision, but this revelatory vision is not using fictitious locations. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not using fictitious uh, uh, narratives and it's not developing a fictitious history, current or future. And, and I, I it's, it's, so that that's how you separate, you know, uh, uh, this type of prophetic vision with uh, people that's just blasting off at the mouth about something you know, that they saw or felt, and it might just be bad food they ate the night before. You know, I mean, you mm -hmm. know, I, 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 and I, I guess what I'm saying is I appreciate the authenticity of this vision that's being shared with us, not only to warn us against potentiality of, of the future, but it is reinforced by what has already occurred. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. One, one other thing, Pastor, if I can. Mm -hmm. Also, is it that like John um, is also making, he's referencing Daniel. So these Jews that that hear or, or, or read about this would know because they know, I mean, you know, throughout the years, I'm sure they were told about these uh, visions of Daniel. So they would know and believe that what, he, what John now is saying is true. So he's using like things that they would be familiar with or that they would know, you know, from scripture, from learning. Right, but the but the thing is though, Sandy. I mean, you, you're spot on with your analysis, and you would think because of the relatability that the audience would easily absorb it. But what is it that most people do when they hear the truth that they could easily affirm? They judge the deliverer of mm. the message. Yes. I mean, it, it, it it's, it's just like you know clockwork it, 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 it just happens I mean the unfortunate reality Jesus even went through that isn't that the, isn't that the boy from Nazareth mm -hmm. you know I mean all of these things occur and the unfortunate reality is people cannot absorb the message because they cannot get past the messenger and and, and I think that when when Jesus selected disciples, he purposely selected individuals that folks would have a challenge absorbing the message because of the messenger. Why do you think that is always the case? Why do you think Jesus never, he rarely selected an individual that what that had everything together i i think pastor because that individual then might feel that it's it's it's, it's like the, the the supreme court justice yeah. uh the brother on the on, on the on the um on the supreme court who never gives credit to uh thurgood marshall who paved the way yeah. all the other people who paved the way for him to be there what he says is i got here by my pull, by being pulled up by my own bootstraps, yeah. and I think that if Jesus would have chosen those people who were like him, you know, there's nothing that anyone could have said to them if you know when when things happened 
they would have all said, you know, it's me. You know, this is happening because of me, not because of Jesus and what Jesus is doing through me. This is because of me and, and what I'm doing. And I think that's why he chose people that when they did things, they would have to say that this is the Lord Jesus working through these people uh, and not them, because they are hardly anyone that we would, you know, consider in terms of being a disciple. I think that's the reason why. Oh, yeah. 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 You're, you're spot on it. And, and Myrina kind of reinforced what you just said. Uh, she typed in the comments. If you have it all together, you won't acknowledge God. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, think about the rich man who showed up to Jesus at, at, at night and said, well, I've done this, this, that. I've done that, that, this. You know, what What more can I do to enter the kingdom of, of heaven? And, and then Jesus says, sell all that you have. <laughs> Get to the poor. And he walked away hurt all of his feelings. <laughs> he was hurting. Because <laughs> he was like, I passed a bunch of poor folk, you know, <laughs> on my way here to ask you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Good, great point. All right, anything else? Anything else that, that, that you had tension with in the text? Anything uh, that uh, you struggled with? Anything uh, that you had an aha moment in the text? What about uh, verse 13? And I think we kind of talked about this a little. Um, and he performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men. Because of the signs he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth. He ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. He was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. One, what is that passage pointing to? Two, what does that passage mean and or say to you? Pastor, you remember the Ten Commandments when the snake, the, uh, they were in the palace. Yeah. And I think the sorcerer uh, did something to produce a snake. Yeah. But then the, uh, there, uh, Aaron threw his rod down yep. to, and, and his, his snake consumed the snake of the sorcerer that, you know, had created the snake. Sorcerers or those people did, could do those kinds of things. And, you know, if no one was there to, you know, contradict them or to do like Aaron did, then yeah. they would be amazed. Oh, yeah. look at this. That's yeah. marvelous. And then, like you said, they would bow down because they could say to themselves, look how great this person is. Look at these great signs that this person has done. But it's all about sorcery. It's yeah. all about mm -hmm. magic and that yeah. kind of thing, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Sandy, your hand is up. Yeah, um, I think this was an attempt to convince the people that he was the true Messiah. Yeah. Um, Elijah okay. oh, called down fire from heaven to uh, consume his sacrifice. And so by him doing this, I think he's trying to prove that, you know, that he is the, the Messiah, the promised one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even think about the Tower of Babel on how uh, individuals had the, in their mind. Look, 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 let's build something so that we could get to heaven quicker than anybody else. We just climbed some stairs. And I, personally, I don't think that the tower that they built was probably any taller than, you know, the GM building downtown. It could not have been that tall. <laughs> but the motivation behind what they were doing is what got them in trouble. So, go ahead. Pastor, can we back up just for a minute? Sure. When, when the dragon and his emissary, and, 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 and Cassandra, help me out, when the dragon and what have you uh, does this, does he pretend to be the Messiah, or does he just want the people to worship him and his emissaries? Uh, you know, I just don't get where he's trying to, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, where he's trying to be the Messiah. 
I, I kind of agree with you, Deacon Phoenix, because yeah. I have tension with with using the term Messiah. I, so I, I I hear what you're saying. So I can I, I agree. Sandy, you wanted to speak to that? Yes. So my understanding what i think okay so we all know satan knows that he's going to lose in the end anyway and i think his whole thing is well i'm just going to take as many as your people as i can with me I understand that okay point is this antichrist that's coming like i said it says he's like the lamb which means he's coming doing all the things that the messiah would do when he comes to convince these people to join him to take these people from god you know what I'm saying? So that's that's just how I see it, is that he's doing all these signs and wonders that you would think that the Messiah would be doing to convince the people that, yeah, he's true. He's the one. He's here for us. And then once he got him, he's like, ha ha, I got you. you okay, know? yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll buy that. I, you know, I'll, I'll go along with that. You know. what, what verse is that, uh, Sandy, where you see this beast has uh, features like a lamb? It's verse um, 11 when it says um, it had two horns like a lamb, mm. but spoke like a dragon. And, and the reason why I ask, because it, it, the, the phrase is he had two horns like a lamb. Mm. But then when and, and this is just semantics with me. But but then when you go to verse eight, the latter part of verse eight, it says all whose names have not been written in the book of life belonging to the lamb mm -hmm. that was slain. Right. I, you just, I, I love that play on words. Mm -hmm. One, the, you know, the, the enemy is like a lamb trying to mimic the lamb okay. that was slain from the creation of the world. That, that 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 right there is just an interesting play on words that you that you see there. Anything anything else? Deacon R. T. Williams, we, we don't we're not hearing from you. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to unmute yourself. All right. Um, okay, let's look at verse number 16. It says he also forced everyone small and great rich and poor free and slave to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead was this a forced mark or was this a mark that the individual that was to receive it, expected it to be on them. Was this forced upon them? So what does that mean when the, when the verse opens up and it says, he also forced? Was that a force like against their will? Yes or no, or are you wrestling with that? Well, when you say forced, well, I, I don't think they were. I don't think they were forced. I I think that they took the mark willingly because of uh, what they were against. Is either you take this mark, you know, and or you don't and, eat. And you don't write, you don't eat, you don't live, you don't this, or you know, you don't take the mark, you about to die. Yeah, yeah. So they they willingly took it, but in a sense, they kind of were forced to choose between life and death. But right, right, right. That that's the point I'm I'm getting to. Yeah, okay. So if that is the case, who is the dominant? audience the dominant population during this particular time is the dominant popular i guess what i'm saying is when i look at verse eight all inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast all whose names have not been written in the book of life belonging to the lamb that was slain from the creation of the world 
are those whose whose names were written written in the book of life are they a part of this audience no i don't believe so pastor i don't either i don't think i, I don't believe not only do i not believe it i do not think they were even in a position to be forced in the predicament that Sandy described. He was given power to give breath. He was also, for, he also forced that word everyone. That's the, every, I want to make sure we understand who the everyone is. Myrina, your hand is up. Yeah, I just had a question. I'm wondering, since we're not talking about um, those who have their names in the book of life, those who are, who don't, will they still have an opportunity to turn to God? I, I, I mm, that's a good question. Pa Pastor, I think in our, in our in discussions, our past, our past discussions, mm -hmm. it says that even during tribulation, and mm -hmm. Sandy, correct me if I'm wrong, that they, st there are those who will still have an opportunity to come to God, and if I'm and if I, if I'm not, you know, if if that's not right, let me know. But I think so, though, in our discussions, uh, I saw some place where they still had that opportunity. So, and, and and I agree with you. And before Sandy answers, so so, so I want to push my reader's question a little more cynical, cynical in a cynical type of way. So if their name is not written in that book of life, is there mm -hmm. another book? They could find their name in. <laughs> so, I, I agree with Deacon Phoenix that in our past studies that we did learn about that there were people there still worshiping. And then I think uh, previously we just talked about the two witnesses that were there. Um, so I think that was stuff that they were doing as well. They were still witnessing to people. So I do believe that people have the opportunity to turn over um, because it, it mentioned something about for those who did not accept the mark, that they would be executed. And so I know it was saying that they would become like the martyrs or something, or they would, they would be martyrs, but I don't know. I could be getting the chapters mixed up because I read them all and I just, you know, read them. Well, I mean, so let's let's push that. Come on, verse fifteen. He was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast, so that it could speak and cause all those who refused to worship the image to be killed. I gotta ask this question because I'm still troubling. I'm still troubled mm -hmm. by Myrina's question. Mm -hmm. So, if I if if I refuse to worship an image, does that automatically make me redeemed? No. I don't think so, Pastor. I think that, you know, you have your two witnesses that are telling you how to become redeemed. And I think that when you uh, follow what they are telling you, then you, uh, you know, then you will be redeemed. But I don't think just refute, you know, I'm not going to uh, bow down because I don't want to be killed. That's not going to get it, I don't believe. But I do believe that, you know, you have an opportunity to be redeemed because if not, why do you have witnesses still witnessing? Wow. If that was the case, there would be no reason for them to be there doing what they're doing. Exactly. So, again, I think that, again, uh, they did, the, the people who are, have not accepted God, they had that opportunity to do that because, you know, we have those two witnesses who are still witnessing during that period of time. Yeah, so, so, so the plan of salvation is still accessible even in that hostile situation that we read in this text. The plan of salvation is still available. Wow, okay. Wow, yeah. And, and Pastor, if we could, this is another reference to um, Daniel, mm -hmm. the story when his three friends would not yeah. worship the images. And yeah. so they were thrown into the hot furnace. But what did they do while they were there? They they prayed and they, what they said to God, you know, even if you don't deliver us from here, we know that you're still delivering us. So to me, that same, you, you, you might do not 
you know, uh, bow down to that other image. But if you reach out and you pray to God and say, hey, I know you can do it, even if you don't, I think that's, you know, I think that's your redemption there. So wow. I think, like Deacon Phoenix said, with these witnesses being there, teaching them how to do it, if that comes to those people's minds at that time, I think that they can be redeemed. Yeah, yeah. Myrina, your hand is up. So the ones who were in the, in the, in the furnace, though, they already believed in God. Now, the ones who may or may not bow down to those images or, or not accept the mark on their head, we don't know if they've accepted because you got to accept Christ. That's the, that's the way into the book of life, right? So, so um, the witnesses are, are hopefully trying to get them to accept Christ, but I, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering how, I'm just wondering how that goes. I yeah, still, I, 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 still hear you, I hear about. your attention, my reader. I like that. Yeah. What is the plan of salvation in a, in a situation like that? Because just because I do not bow, does that, that's, that is, it's more to the plan of salvation. Because there are people in society today that do not acknowledge God as, 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 as all powerful but did not bow to Trump or does not bow to systemic racism. They're loving people. They give to the poor. But all of these, these, these things that occur is not what uh, 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 redeems you. Now, what, am what, I being heard, Sandy? What's that? Sandy? We we hear you now. <laughs> now. We hear you now. What was happening? I've been trying to get in, but it's but uh, I'm on this phone. I'm on the phone, so I guess I don't know if that baby's different or not. But uh, <laughs> back when we were talking about the Book of Life, yes. Okay, this Book of Life, that's that's the uh, the name which is uh, is for the righteousness people, those that who are righteous, and if their name is not on the book, when you show up at this gate to get in. And the one name that is not there, well, they will be turned back. This, this book is for the righteous. They're keeping a record of you. So when you show up, if your name is there, you enter. If not, you turn back. That's right. the way I see that. Oh, yeah. And, 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 I, and I, don't think, I don't think we are in any way disputing that. I think from a contextual perspective, when we read verse 8 and it says, all inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the book of life belonging to the lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. And then we see how we tie that into uh, individuals who die as a result of making a conscious decision to not worship the beast. We're just trying to understand or gauge where is the redemption plan for those in this level of tribulation? And I think we, 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 we've gone as far as to the point saying, well, you know, those two witnesses, if individuals do not accept the testimony of those two witnesses in, 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 in their declaration, then they leave themselves susceptible to the, the devices of these beasts and the demon demons that are that are ever present. So so I think I, I think we got we, we, I think what what Deacon R T Williams is saying is, look, we got to draw a line of demarcation here. If your name is not in the Book of Life, and there is no other reference to any other name, any other book then it's more likely than not that you, you are not going to be redeemed. So then we have to ask ourselves the essential question, is the book sealed? Is the book sealed to the point where, you know, those that survived the tribulation, they gotta be able to be, to be uh in have an entry in there so the book must not be sealed 
because we see during the times of tribulation where there are redeeming redemption uh, 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 moments that could occur for those uh, who do not uh, uh, fall susceptible to uh, to the devices of, of the devil. Myrina. Yeah, and I would think that would be the case because you got a lot of people who you got to make them a believer. They have to see what's going on around them. And if we and if we end up in a trip, the tribulation and all the people whose names are written in the book of life, you know, they're gone or that. I, I think that would make some people who were not believers mm -hmm. become believers after so, seeing all that's going on around them. I, I, I agree what you're saying. I, I, I think we have to ask ourselves this question. Who is actually in this tribulation period? Is it, is it those who have lived on this earth and have died? Is it those that are on the earth and then Christ and, and, and then while they were alive, this occurred. Because, I, you know, I, I think we got to be careful with thinking that an individual, or, or maybe it is true, an individual dies and is resurrected with the benefit of going through tribulation. So an individual... Are we saying that an individual could live a life, their entire life, birth from cradle to grave, a, a, a lifetime of sin, and get redeemed in tribulation? Is that a possibility? That's that that right there is the question that's on the table. Have we discussed that? Because I don't know if that's a chance anyone would want to take. Well, I'll just I'll just change my life during tribulation. It's not that easy. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll just get it together after I die. I don't know if that's what the text is saying. Mm -hmm. Sandy, your hand is up. Well, for those that's living, I mean, it's possible because the thief on the cross, right next to next to Jesus. Now, I don't know if he's been a thief all his life, but he was a thief up until the time he was about to die. And he told Christ, remember me in your new kingdom. And Christ said, you'll be there with me. So, I mean, it's right. possible. You're, but Sandy, you're, qua you're quantifying a person, and I'm just repeating what you said, if you're living. Yeah. But what if, using Myrina's example, what if I died in 1949 uh -huh. and every day before my death, I was a hellion? <laughs> Do I have the possibility of getting it right in tribulation? Is that a chance that someone could take? I, I don't think you're you're in tribulation, Pastor. If that's the case, oh, yeah. I I, th we, I think that Cassandra has said before that during tribulation the rapture is taking place. Did you not say that, uh, Sandy? Well, the rapture took place before. The tribulation. Before before tribulation, so those people who uh, who are left during tribulation are those people whose names are not in the book of life. If I am, am I correct? Tell me when I'm, I go wrong. Is that correct? You, you spot uh, on. Okay. All right. Now, so you know, and like you said, if you die, you know, during tribulation, we've all agreed that you do have a chance for redemption. Because the witnesses are there telling you how to go about the same as the disciples went about telling everyone, how do you go about being redeemed? The witnesses during tribulation, those who are left, who have not been raptured, who have not been taken up, they are telling them, how do you go about being redeemed? Just as the disciples told those with whom they, come in con they came in contact with how to be redeemed. If you die, just like you said, it's too late. There's nothing, I think the Catholics believe there's a place, Perfect. and I don't know what that place is, where yeah. someone can pray you into heaven. You know, was it purgatory? Is yeah. that is it purgatory? Anyway, no, we don't believe that. 
if you do not believe in Jesus Christ and his dying for our sins and his resurrection, when you die and get judged, there's, there's, there's no, you know, you know, there's a place for you. And, and that is that place called hell. And, and again, once that happens, there is no, there's no possibility, according to Baptist, Baptist doctrine, to be redeemed. And, and is that correct? Myrina, your hand is up. So I was kind of on the same um, line as Brother Phoenix. I think about how at funerals, mm -hmm. when a minister is eulogizing someone, a big part of what they do is try to get others to come to Christ while they still have time. Wow. So, I, you know, I, when using your example of the person who died back in the 40s, I think they had to have accepted Christ before their death. That's, that's um, right. As opposed to being able to during tribulation. I don't know um, if the, the, the during tri tribulation, I don't think they'd be able to to turn then. Mm -hmm. because I don't you're, know. Be, yeah, because but I'm going to tell you, though, I think about the fact that we're all made in God's image and he loves all of us. Right. So he wa he wants as many of his children to be in heaven with him as possible. Right. So I don't know. I don't know. I you know it's because see the implication is the implication is if I died in 1949 and I was a hellion all my life, and my second chance is in the tribulation, then that means I resurrected into a different body to endure tribulation. I don't know if the Bible says that. That, that uh, does not. No. So, so then my question is, if, 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 if that's, if that's not who is in tribulation, if tribulation are, are those who didn't, are not participating in the rapture, who is participating in the tribulation? Are they those that are alive and were not raptured? Is that who tribulation is 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 there for? I would for say example, that that, that, that example, is correct, Pastor. If if Christ comes back today, and everyone on the Detroit Pistons team are not raptured. Do they go to and they they live through the the rapture? Are those going to are those the ones that are going to be in tribulation? That's that, that is my that's my belief, Pastor. That's mine. Yeah, yeah. I think Deacon R T. You have to hit what is it? Star six to unmute. Yeah, there you go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, let's take a look at uh, verse 16. Okay. And, and 17. Okay, uh, verse 16 it says, He calls all to receive a mark in their right hand or uh, their forehead. Okay, now, as he said, they calls all. That means everybody, young, old, rich, poor, whoever. You must have this mark. Then it says, 17, no man might buy or sell he that has the mark. Now, this mark, in my opinion, this, this is your ticket in. That's, that's where you're identifying yourself with, with this mark. So what I'm saying, what he's saying here, you just come as you are, as long as you got that mark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Deacon, you, you don't want that mark. <laughs> okay. Right. And, and, and then you also, you also have to take into consideration it's like this. So, 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 so there was rehearsal today, and there were like maybe ten people in the sanctuary. I I could have walked in there and said, "Okay, all of us are going to receive a McDonald's milkshake." Well, that's just those that are in the sanctuary. I'm not talking about everybody that's in Detroit. So, in this text. The all, the all are those who, one, whose names are not written in the book of life, and they are also those who had no problem worshiping the image. That's who the all is in this text, this text, this context right here. 
And so I, I, I say that to say we've got to be very careful with context when we're reading passages of scripture like this as well. A am, I, am, am I making sense? It makes perfect sense. Okay, okay, okay. And then finally, I, I love uh, <laughs> the very first verse, a very first uh, sentence of verse uh, 18. <laughs> this calls for wisdom. I, I, I wish you could just stop right there, <laughs> but this calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is man's number. His number is six, six, and six. What, 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 is, what is John trying to do in that last verse? What is John trying to say by not only uh, presenting us with a riddle like, but he's also layering into these numbers. What is he trying to say? Or what what did what what thoughts conjured in your mind, Sandy? Well, I looked at it as uh unholy. Uh yeah. you know, six is one number short of seven. We know seven is the number of perfection. So I'm looking at this six being the number of man is because we're we're imperfect. This is it represents imperfection or you know unholiness. Right. Myrina. I have, a, I have a question though. So I know, but why six? I understand what you're saying, Sandy, about seven. Seven is completion, it's perfection, all of that. But why six? Why not two? Why not four? I, I'm just wondering where the six, six, six comes from. I, I think I it, it comes from, it's, it's, it's like this. There are a lot of people that will validate mediocrity over perfection and then say, well, it's the same thing. No, it's not. And we live in a time right now where the unfortunate reality is creation is given more credence than the creator. So much to the point where our mindsets have caused us to think that we're even better than the creator. This zeroes us down to who we, I don't care how perfect we think we are, we'll never get to the level of perfection. So, but so, so to answer your question, you know, wh why not two, why not four, why six? Because six is that, one short of perfection. And many times that's all it takes to divide wheat from tares. That's all it takes sometimes to really see uh, the motivations of people. Some people will just accept mediocrity. Some people have no problem giving their pearls to swine. So some people have no problem with a wolf in sheep clothing. So some because they don't they're not bringing to the table anything to to show that they've studied to be able to draw a line of demarcation between fact and fiction. Some people have no problem uh, sporting uh, 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 firing off you know fake news. Some people accept fake news. Some people will cause will call a lie truth and a truth a lie. Those are the sixes. You know, so, some people, some people will look at a diamond and say, well, you know, it's, you can't really see it with a naked eye. It looks perfect to me. But if you get a, a magnifying glass, you'll see all of the perfection and you could sell an imperfect diamond to people like that. And, and that, that's, that, that's, I, I think that is the whole riddle thought behind the number the utilization of the number six so it's a resemblance yeah. yep sandy your hand is up 
you know, I was just thinking too, like um, how when you see the word holy in the Bible, it said three times, holy, holy, holy. So here we have six, six, six as like, you know, the, the oh. mirror. That's, I mean, I don't know. I just was a thought I just had. Exactly. It's, no, that, 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 that is exactly it. It is the Antichrist will always try to mimic the, the Holy One. It's it, it's it's kind of like, you know, uh, 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 comedians who make fun of other comedians. They're not really the comedian. You could close your eyes and hear someone mimicking Ray Charles, but that is still Jamie Foxx. But folks will say to themselves, "Well, I no longer need Ray Charles anymore because I could just follow Jamie Foxx." That's how the enemy works. That's how the Antichrist works. The Antichrist wants you to accept a facsimile of the truth. And then when you follow it, you won't realize until it's too late that you're on a road to destruction, to death. You won't realize it until you find out that this person, this facsimile of the truth will have you do doing things that will jeopardize your very life. Again, Pastor, can you hear me again? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Hey, look at that uh, verse 18, mm -hmm. where it says, and his number is 600, three scores, and six. <laughs> now, just suppose someone doesn't know what three scores mean. So that, that they're they going to get confused there. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sister Evelyn? <laughs> well, I would just wonder. Hand. Yes, we hear you. Well, we did yes. Hear you. We did hear you. Now we don't hear you anymore. We had a problem with you with the electrical here. Oh, now I hear you. Uh oh. Going in and out. The three six. Well, all right. Okay, so um is there a common name yeah, for we, those we, we six still... like I didn't get the last part of your question. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um I, I, yeah, we're, we're not we're not hearing you. We have a problem with the electrical system here. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, well, we've come to the close of our class. This has uh, been a very interesting, um, uh, thought-provoking uh, uh, journey in this particular chapter. Uh, next week, we are going to look at uh, chapter 14. And the subject in my Bible is, one, it's called The Lamb and the 144,000. And in others, it's called a perfect offering. All right. So I'm, I'm glad we go from six to perfection. How about that? Six to seven. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for connecting with us. Um, this uh, class will be uploaded on our YouTube page. So you'll be able to not only uh, review uh, this particular uh, uh, study, uh, but all of the other uh, previous chapters that we have journeyed through. Uh, you can also share it with uh, family and friends. Uh, as we navigate through a very challenging uh, book of the Bible and kind of tear down a lot of the taboo um, uh, uh, themes uh, that uh, have uh, been prevalent in, in conversation. Uh, again, uh, appreciate you uh, taking the time out. Uh, good to see you, Patricia. Uh, you connected in. Good to see you, uh, uh, Minister Murray. And yeah. all, of, all of you. All right. And all of those uh, who have connected, Myrina, and all those who have connected with us, uh, if there's nothing else, uh, let us close out with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, but most of all, what our heart has felt. And we thank you, God, for another opportunity uh, that you have blessed us uh, to learn more about our responsibilities to you, to ourself, and to the world. Lord, Lord, we pray for those who are connected with us live, as well as those who may listen to this at a later time, and we look forward to rejoining again next week. In your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, we ask all things. Let everyone see.